In today's video, hungry villagers take part in a dangerous rite of spring, attempting to steal magical eggs from a crazed forest demigod, as we play The Hare, a solo and co-op scenario for Veritwood, the folk horror skirmish game. Well, hi folks, and welcome to the channel. I'm Lee, your old hammered host. I'm here with Lynn, your other old hammered host. Hello. And today we're going to play some Verret Wood, a folk horror skirmish game. More specifically, we are playing the Hare scenario. It's a solo scenario from the supplement The Village in the Hare, and it's very appropriate for the spring equinox, right? Yes, it is. Getting ready to plant those crops for the harvest in the fall. So normally Verret Wood is a player versus player game with each player commanding a raggedy cult of up to four cultists. Today's game is a solo game, though we are playing it cooperatively, so Lynn and I will each be controlling two cultists, and we'll be facing off against the dreaded Hair of Yester right there, which is a corrupt demigod that has left these eggs, these precious eggs, in the forest for the equinox. And our villagers haven't quite gone full cultist yet. They are still scratching out a living on their little farms, but it's tough, and so they really depend on these eggs. They need to grab at least one or two to help make sure they have a healthy crop and a healthy harvest in the fall. And they are just one bad harvest away from going full cannibal, so it's pretty important that they nab an egg or two. And more would be better than you could put one with the radishes, the potato crop, put one in with the hemp field. So that is their goal. These villagers are going to sneak into the hair of Yester's lair, and they're going to try to nab some of these eggs, these precious eggs, and hold on to them until the end of turn four while the hare is going to be defending those nests and basically trying to chew up the villagers. And also it will randomly hop during the turn. And when it lands with a thundering impact, it'll knock over anybody within six inches, making them drop their eggs, which will then break. So uh, they may collect an egg. They may try to run away with it, but then there might be some kind of uh, hair quake, I guess. And they might drop the egg and then they got to get another one. So here are our four villagers. I'm going to be playing Gustav here with the pitchfork and Atlas here with the huge spiked mace. And then we'll be playing Sigmund there with the bow and Helga who has a bladed weapon and a torch. So we got 500 favor to begin with and that allowed us to boost a few stats. So Sigmund has a dex of two instead of a dex of one. Helga has a strength of two. Uh, Gustav has a strength of two and a defense of two. And uh, Atlas there has a strength of three, so he is the heavy hitter. But uh, with the exception of Gustav, everybody has a defense of one, so they're just running around in raggedy rags, which is not a lot of defense against a rabbit bite. So each of our villagers will activate once per round, based on their token being drawn from the bag. And the Hare of Yester will activate twice a round, plus there's going to be three events that can happen during the round, and that basically means that the Hare has jumped. So during his normal activation, he can move and attack. And during these special actions, he's going to hop. And again, there's going to be a hair quake and it's going to knock everybody down. So uh, we don't know where he's going to land. So we're basically going to be trying to collect eggs and then running around uh, furiously, trying to avoid being landed upon or landed near by a giant uh, demigod hair. And before I forget, our cult curious uh, villagers here have four rituals they can perform. One is Blessing of the Blade, which basically gives them a strength buff for the next attack. Regurgitated Crow is a ranged attack, a magic ranged attack. Birds of a Feather is kind of a teleportation type spell, which means if the hare is, say, attacking an ally, you can do the Birds of a Feather ritual and warp in to help that friend. And then finally we have Summon. This is a 16 point ritual and we only have 20 ritual points to work with at first. But basically, if we spend 16 points on a ritual, we can summon a helper here, a pumpkin head, who will uh, assist us in trying to fight the hare. He can't pick up any eggs, but he can battle the hare for us. He can keep the hare occupied. Okay, at this point, I will give you my usual disclaimer, which means I've read the rules, and I have a tenuous grasp on how the game is played. But once we start playing the game, we try to keep the page flipping to a minimum, so we will just sort of wing it. And hopefully that will give you a flavor of the game, but uh, there might be a few little rule mistakes here and there, but that's just the way it goes. Okay, we're going to take a moment off camera to set up our villagers, probably in the rear corners there. And then we'll put our tokens in a bag and we'll play Verretwood the Hare here uh, for the Spring Equinox.
Let's get started. Well, let's get started. Okay, so our villagers have set up. We got two villagers in this corner, got two villagers in the other corner. This is Sigmund and Helga, and Sigmund has some poison that he can put on an arrow during the game, and Helga has some oil, so she's going to try to set the rabbit on fire during the game. And all of our villagers have mort shrooms. Each have one mort shroom, which is basically a healing potion, which can heal five points of damage. And mort shrooms are fortunately free actions, so any time during your activation, you can eat a mort shroom and get a little pep if you've been badly mauled by the uh, demigod hare. Here's Gustav with his pitchfork, it's basically a spear, and Atlas with his big spiky mace. And here is our crazed rabbit. He's going to activate twice around, plus he's going to have three special events where he's going to hop randomly when they get drawn from the bag. And when he activates, he's going to move up to nine inches toward the nearest villager or summon model if we summon Pumpkinhead and uh, try to do some harm because he wants to protect those eggs. And just in case I didn't mention it, there is an unlimited supply of eggs in each egg pile. Each villager can only carry one egg, and if they happen to get injured or knocked over, then uh, their egg is broken and they got to go back and get a new one. And some quick terrain features. We didn't use a lot of the super fancy terrain that they have in Veritwood. We do have forests, which are going to give the hare, if the hare is in the forest, a defensive bonus against getting shot. And we're saying these uh, mossy areas here are poison brambles, so they are impassable, except for the hare, who could basically go through anything. They are his brambles, after all. They are his brambles. And the scary pond is difficult terrain, so it cuts movement in half. But again, not for the hare, who likes the scary pond. I guess he's a good swimmer. Okay, drawing the first token. Ready? It is an event. It's an event, so the hare's going to take a hop. Randomly, nine inches. So, we're going to uh, roll. He's going to hop kind of this way, I guess. Okay. So that would put the hare right about there. I like that hop. That's a good hop. That's a very good hop. But there's more hops to come. There are, but at least if he hops nine inches, he can't get anywhere near our guys. And the next token is the flower. Helga. Okay, so what's Helga going to do? Helga's going to run towards that egg pile. Okay, run is a two-point action, but you can move one and a half times your normal movement. So Helga is running hammer and tong toward the egg pile because they really need to have a good harvest this year. Next token is another bunny hop. Nine inches that way. He did an exploratory hop toward the dice tray, and now he's hopping back. And no one's within six inches. So that is our second event. So two hops out of the way. Next token is an activation token for Mr. Rabbit. So if the rabbit could see the villagers and he can't see any right now, he would move nine inches toward the closest one. But since he can't, he will move nine inches at random. And it appears that he's moving back here towards the water. He's a parched little bunny and he's having a refreshing bath in the pond. But now he can see Helga. So time for another token. Okay. Uh-oh, it's the bunny. It's the rabbit. The rabbit ignores terrain, so he's just going to barrel straight towards Helga. Yep. Okay, so the rabbit attacks with two dice. Helga is defending with one. There's no extra buffs to worry about right now, so go ahead and roll. Rabbit got a critical hit, so that's okay. a 10. Yeah. Versus Helga's defensive five, so it's a hit. So the hair of Yester does five damage plus one for the crit. So six point off of Helga. That takes her from ten to four. She might need to eat a mushroom. I think soon. so. But fortunately, that is the two actions for the hair of Yester. Oh, that's true. Though he does have one event left. And the villager who activates is the dragon. Who's that? Sigmund. Sigmund. So the hair is basically chomping on Helga's arm, so Sigmund doesn't dare shoot at it. So instead, he's going to pray and try to boost the ritual points of yes. the villagers. So that is a two action action. So that's all of his action points. And as a result of that, the villagers will get one to 10 additional ritual points. Four. So that takes him from 20 to 24. So that's not bad. All right, what do the fates have in store? Pick from the bag. It is an event. An event. So the rabbit is going to hop. 
the rabbit takes a mighty hop. So he takes a random hop over this way. So fortunately for these two villagers, neither of them are within six inches because the bunny lands with a thunderous impact and he would knock them over, but uh, they are not knocked over. So we draw another token. We're getting down to the last of our tokens. We have two tokens the left. Two. Yeah. The moon. So that is Atlas. Atlas is the moon. So he's going to hoof it. He knows the rabbit is on the other side of the board, so he is going to try to run toward the egg nest. Nine would put him about right here by this pleasant statue. So there is Atlas right there. He's trying to get close to the egg nest. And the final villager is Gustav, and he's also going to run toward the egg nest. So that puts him right about there. So Gustav and Atlas are sprinting toward the egg nest. So that is the end of turn one. We haven't gathered any magical eggs, but no one is dead. Helga's close. So we will collect our tokens and rebag them. So going to turn two, Gustav is right here. Atlas is over here. There's an egg nest right there. And on the other side of the board, here is Helga right here. She's been badly mauled. Here is Sigmund right here. He was meditating last round, but now he's ready to fight. And here is the hair of Yester, ready to cause some mischief. Okay, do you wish to draw a token? First token of round two? First token of round two? Gustav. So that is Gustav right here. He has to try to run around these poison brambles. About four inches that way. And another three that way. So if he runs, he can make it all the way to the egg nest. But he can't grab an egg quite yet. So there is Gustav. He has reached the egg nest, but it's like, holy moly, these things are big. Next token. Helga. Helga. So Helga is badly injured. So she's going to eat a mort shroom. Okay. She's going to take a free action, eat a mort shroom, her one and only mort shroom. Get five points back, which brings her up to nine. I think she's going to run towards the eggs. So Helga was seven inches away from the egg nest, so she's going to take two actions, two action points, and run up. So she's hiding behind the rock as well. Mm-hmm. Because she doesn't want to be in view of the hair. Which makes sense, because the hair is right there. So Helga is over here, out of line of sight. But that does mean Sigmund is closest now. Yes, the hare has a line of sight on Sigmund. But sacrifices must be made for the sake of the planting. <laughs> All right, let me draw a token. What will the fates have in store for us now? And it is an event, so maybe the rabbit will hop away. That would be nice. Maybe back to the pool. All right, roll away and see what happens. Hops toward the edge of the board. So he decides he wants to eat some tasty poison brambles, and he hops kind of over here. He tuckered himself out going after Helga, and now he wants a snack. Fortunately, Atlas is outside of the six-inch bubble. He feels the ground quake, but he isn't knocked over. Time for another token. It is the hair. The hair. So Atlas is the big winner here because he's in line of sight and he's closest. He's within nine inches, so the hare takes a beeline running through the poison brambles. And he's going to bite Atlas. Atlas is very strong. He's got a strength of three, but his defense is only one. So the hare is biting with two, and Atlas is defending with one. So let's see what happens. Well, the hare won. The hare got a seven versus Atlas is two. So Atlas takes five points of damage, but it wasn't a crit. But Atlas is pretty strong. He's got a strength of three, and he's got his hammer there, so he could potentially hit the hare and knock it over even. So we'll have to see what happens on Atlas's activation. But for now, he's in hand-to-hand -hand combat with that wily rabbit. Okay, let's draw another token from the Bag of Destiny. It's an event. The rabbit hops. He takes a mighty hop. So he's going to hop toward the edge. He's going to hop toward the edge. He bit Atlas, but he doesn't want to get hit by the mace. So he's going to hop to the edge of the board. Hop. And no one's within six inches. And who's next? Who activates next? It is another event. It's another event. So the rabbit hops again. So that's kind of a lateral. He's going to make a lateral. 
He got energized by his uh, moss. He's hopping mad. So he hops to this edge of the board, and that's the last event for this round, so no more hopping, though the rabbit does get one more activation. Who's next? The moon. Who's the moon sigil? Atlas. So the moon sigil is Atlas. He's going to chomp down on his one and only Mort Shroom and go back up to 10 hit points. Atlas, unfortunately, is just outside of 6-inch range, so he's going to have to run to get up to the egg nest. So that is going to be his two action action. Gustav is thinking about omelets right now. I'd be thinking of omelets too. Because they're pretty hungry. So the next one is Sigmund. Sigmund, the sigil of Sigmund. So here is the dragon sigil of Sigmund he's activating. And he can't get within 24 inches of the hair. Oh yeah, I mean if he wanted to shoot the bow, the hair is way over on the other side of the table. So instead, Sigmund is going to run towards the egg nest. He can run over low obstacles. If they were taller, he'd have to do a climb action. And then we're saying the brambles are um, impenetrable because they're spiky and poisonous. So Sigmund will get to about there. Sigmund is right there. And last and scariest is the hare. The hare gets to activate again. So the hare is going to activate. He's going to move nine inches toward Atlas and Gustav, which would put him right about there. And they're so focused on their prize there, they don't see the danger, the crazed demigod sneaking up on them. Okay, we're going into round three, I guess. So nobody's dead. We don't have any eggs either. We better get some. Got to get some eggs or it's going to be a long winter. Well, do you wish to choose a token? An event. It's an event. It's time for the bunny hop. So the rabbit hops. Into the forest. Yeah, kind of right here. And unfortunately, that is within six inches of our villagers. So they're both knocked over by the thunderous quake. So the bunny lands with a giant woomph, and the ground shakes, and uh, the villagers get knocked over. So what happens next? It's an event. It's another bunny hop. Okay, rabbit. Wily rabbit. He's going to jump kind of toward the front of the board here. Yeah. So it's about right here. And there's a thunderous quake, but nobody's within six inches. Or if they are, they're already knocked over. All right, time to see who activates next. And it's Gustav. So that is the rune of Gustav. So he's going to spend one action to stand up. And he's going to spend another action to collect an egg. So he grabs an egg. And now we pick another token. And another event. So that's another hop. Hopping this way. Could be worse. Could be much worse. Boom! There's a seismic ripple, but no one's within six inches, so no one's knocked over. He's a creature of chaos, so you never know where he's going to land. Exactly. The hare is next. The hare is next. Not quite within nine, but he's very close. So he runs up and growls menacingly at Atlas. <laughs> So Gustav has an egg, Atlas is lying on the ground, and the rabbit is closing in. And it's the moon sigil. Is that Atlas? That is Atlas. So Atlas hops to his feet. He's not base to base with the rabbit right now, so he can't hammer him like he'd like to. But he can collect an egg, so that's what he's going to do. He's going to collect an egg and uh, laugh in the face of death. <laughs> the next chip is the rabbit. The rabbit. Okay, well, the rabbit's definitely going to attack Atlas. So the rabbit, in a fit of rage, charges Atlas and attacks. Atlas has a lot of offense. He doesn't have a lot of defense. So the rabbit's going to attack with two. Atlas is defending with one. Come on, Atlas. And Atlas defended. He got a nine versus the rabbit's eight. So the rabbit was not able to chomp on Atlas. And Atlas has a positive attitude right now because he's got that egg and he doesn't want to let loose of it. Even with the giant rabbit bearing down on him. Who's next? It's either Sigmund or Helga. Sigmund or Helga. It is, is Sigmund? Sigmund, yes. That's the sigil of Sigmund. 
Is he within nine? Can he run he up is. there? He is. So, so he's, he's going to run up. Going to run up to the egg pile. So Sigmund is adjacent to the egg pile, but hasn't seized one yet. Okay, who's next? Last one. Helga. Helga. She is adjacent to the egg pile. So she is going to grab an egg and move six inches. All right. So Helga is going to run away with her prize. Mm-hmm. So that's the end of turn three. Now we're going to turn four, the final turn. And all we have to do is hold on to our eggs and we will have a great harvest season in the fall. So I'm going to pick a rune and it looks like Helga. Helga is going to perform a ritual. Summon the pumpkin head. That's a 16 point ritual. It is. So now we only have eight points left. So we get a pumpkin head to help defend us from the rabbit scourge. Yes. So the pumpkin head is right here. And he also has 10 hit points. He's got 10 hit points, yep. All right, who's next? The who's pumpkin next? head. That's the pumpkin head. What do you want him to do? He's going to move nine inches towards the rabbit. Towards the rabbit. He can't pick up any eggs. Right, so he, he may can, as well run interference. But he can run interference. Where is the rabbit? The hare is over there. We want to get him in line of sight. So maybe he's like here? Yeah. Get him up there. So that way, no matter which way the hare jumps, he should be in line of sight. Drawing a token, and we get the rabbit. That was the rabbit. I was hoping for a hop. Silly rabbit. So the rabbit takes a chomp out of Atlas. He rolls two. Atlas defends with one. And Atlas defends again. Atlas is putting up a furious defense against the rabbit. And now we pick another token. It's Sigmund. So Sigmund is going to grab an egg. And move six inches. And move six inches. Okay, so Sigmund has an egg. Everybody has an egg, right? Everybody has an egg. And it's an event. So which way will the rabbit hop? That is the question. Mr. Rabbit, where are you hopping to? So that would be about by that tree over there. So, hops way over here by this tree, but no villagers are within six inches, so no one is knocked over. So what we really need is Atlas and Gustav to get their turns before the rabbit does and run. Right. The moon, who's the moon sigil? Atlas. Atlas. Run, Atlas, run! Atlas is a running fool, so Atlas is going to go about three inches this way, another six sort of this way. So that puts him about there, and actually with that big hammer, he had a fairly decent chance of putting a hurt on the rabbit, but the rabbit has 40 hit points, so it would have taken a lot of hammer blows or uh, arrows or fire to bring down the beast, but uh, let's see what happens next. Will it be Gustav? Yes, it is Gustav. Gustav. Run, Gustav, run! Run, you crazy bastard. So, Gustav is going to run nine. Now the rabbit has three turns. Now the rabbit gets three moves. Okay, what's he going to do? It's a mighty hop. It's a mighty hop. Rabbit's over here. Ooh, that's not good. So he hops way over here to the edge of the brambles. All that hopping made him hungry. Now we need to see if Atlas is within six inches. Unfortunately, he is, so he is knocked over, Ooh! and his egg is broken. He was sprinting for freedom, and then he got knocked over. Will it be a bite or a hop? It will be a hop. It's a hop. Hopefully he hops the other direction. And we don't want poor Gustav to drop his egg. So, it's kind of back here, so the rabbit hops to the edge. He could have put a hurt on Gustav, but he didn't do it. And there's one token left, and unfortunately the rabbit activates, and he's going to rush forward and bite Atlas. He's well within nine inches. That's unfortunate. So he rushes up, Atlas has dropped his egg, and now he's going to get bitten. So because Atlas is down, the rabbit is attacking with three dice, and Atlas is defending with one. And the rabbit got an eight, so he does five points of damage on Atlas. So Atlas takes five points, but fortunately for him, that is the end of the game. So he'll have an injury to take back to the village. 
The pumpkin head was supposed to be taking the bites, but Atlas was the one who incurred the wrath of the rabbit. All right, so that was a fairly good outcome for the villagers. They scored three eggs, so that is going to be an excellent harvest. So there'll be extra carrots for everybody this winter. And uh, they'll have to give a mort shroom to poor Atlas. He was fighting that rabbit almost all game, and finally it caught up with him and gave him a vicious bite on the calf. So now he has a war wound to uh, complain about all winter long. Sigmund can give him his mort shroom. That's right, Sigmund did not consume his mort shroom during the game, so he can pass it off to Atlas, and they can all return to the village at full strength. All right, folks, that is our springtime celebratory game of the hare, a solo scenario for Veritwood, the folk horror skirmish game. And as I said, this is not a typical game of Veritwood. Normally, you'd have a couple of cults duking it out for those eggs and maybe fighting some more forest creatures, but this is just a small game to give you a sense of what it's all about. I do like the mechanism of choosing tokens to see who activates. Right. Really gets the adrenaline going sometimes. Yeah, it's a pretty cool random activation system, and because the hare in this game gets two activations, plus three hops, three special events, he's moving around quite a bit, and so anything can happen. He can be halfway across the board. Yeah, and then all of a sudden he's right next to you. And all of a sudden he's right there chomping on your leg. All right, folks, that is a wrap on today's game. I hope you enjoyed it. We will be back soon with some more tabletop wargaming stuff here in the near future. But until then, take care of yourselves, have a good spring, and we will see you soon. See you soon.